Hi, everybody. Dan Ullman, Mike Muir, race number nine at Gulfstream Park on Saturday is the $75,000 powder break stakes. Phillies and mares going one mile on the turf. Before we get to the analysis, let me remind you to please try those DRF mobile pass performances. Experience those DRF classic PPs with true mobile interactive access on your phone anywhere, anytime. Access full cards in seconds. Learn more at drf.com slash MPPS. Here's the field for the $75,000 powder break stakes. There's a very familiar name in here. The favorite in here is going to be Got Stormy. $1.5 million in earnings, a multiple grade one stakes winner, a grade one stakes winner against the boys, second in the Breeders' Cup mile last time out. Got Stormy, very dangerous on the class drop. Yeah, I mean, just, you know, tons the horse to beat in this race, Dan. It's the easiest spot she's been in in a very long time. Um, you know, we'll see what happens with her. This race, to me anyway, I don't know if you feel the same way. It would just be a lot more interesting if she wasn't in here because I don't know how you really bet against her with that much confidence in this race. And there should be a good pace on in this race. Time for U.S. believes the pace will be fast. You'll note the red bar scenario. Jakarta, the two, is a stretch out sprinter. Valedictorian is very fast out of the gate. And, of course, you've got Silver Kitten in here, has a lot of early speed. And it's not like Got Stormy is slow as well. W.W. Fitzy trying turf for the first time also should be aggressively ridden early. There is expected to be a little bit of weather in the South Florida area this weekend. And maybe that will affect this race some rain on friday perhaps into saturday and the number one noor sahara this is a horse that's been racing in europe this horse might appreciate a little bit of give in the ground making her north american debut for chad brown getting lasix for the first time a stakes winner in france coming off of a layoff not sure about the competition she faced last time out but not sure she liked that firm going uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Chad has a really good record with horses like this, and she does look like she has some ability too, Dan. The the first win of her career last year off the layoff, um, she just had the softest trip in the world that day, sitting right up on a very modest pace. She looked good winning, but it was an easy trip. The stakes win, though, in May, she ran a lot better in that race because she did not break well from the gate at all. She was last for a long way, and she came with a good finish in there. I think this Philly's okay. And both of those races came on going. That was less than firm. If it rains, you can move Noor Sahara up. And if the pace is fast, you would expect her to benefit. She probably doesn't have a ton of early speed as compared to some of the others. The two is Jacquard, and Michael Maker is just fairly remarkable with these kind of horses. He gets them for the first time. He makes surface switches. He stretches them out. They seem to improve. Here's Jacquard's win in an optional claiming race, first time for Maker. She got a soft trip in here. She was able to control the pace up front. They weren't going very fast. It wasn't a great field. I do like the way she sprinted on home at the end of this race. Jakar, I think, is the classic what-if horse. What if there's not a lot of pace in the race? Well, there seems to be some pace. What about the distance? She's stretching out with a sprint pedigree. What about the class? She's taking a big step up in class. I think there's something here with this horse with some ability, and maybe she's found her right surface. She's going to be a big price. I don't want to knock her too much. Uh, she just has a lot of things to overcome from a pace standpoint. Yeah, it does. It just feels like a really tough spot. Um, and and you know, adding into that, and I agree with what you're saying. You know, Maker's danger with horses like this. I just when I go back and watch her turf debut, I know she looked good winning. You just you don't go any slower than that in five furlong turf sprints. She absolutely walked on the lead and then sprinted home. And I just have to believe it's going to be way tougher for her. And here, I, I just can't take this horse. Bella Chow has entered the main track only. So we'll move on to Valedictorian. And this is an old class horse. She's won 12 times in her career. And I believe she's slowly racing herself back into shape for trainer Kelly Breen. Her first start of the year in the Honey Fox, she drew a tough outside post position. She was hustled out, pressed the pace, and tired. Last time out in the Sand Springs, again, she drew near the outside. And she had to work very hard to make the lead. We turn into the stretch. Valedictorian is in front. But these are a couple of mares that run her down late that are pretty good. La Signare and Zofele. It'll be interesting to see where Valedictorian is placed in the early portion of this race. She won't be far away. She'll probably be sitting second, if not outright on the lead. Yeah, that's how I looked at it too. I feel like they're just going to use her speed again in here. That seems to be her best running style. I mean, she didn't finish that great in that race. We're just watching there, the Sand Springs. But as you mentioned, they did have to use her pretty good to make the front. She's actually very underrated. I can't say I'm a huge fan of hers, Dan, but she's an underrated horse. 
Danny Gargan has really gotten to the bottom of Silver Kitten ever since they decided to use her speed in the early portion of the races. She's won three out of her last four starts, including this effort, and now winners of two other than at Gulfstream on March the 27th. She went to the lead. She set a nice rated pace under Luis Saez, and she is able to hold off a decent Chad Brown train runner, Bacchanalia. This was a good performance for Silver Kitten. Cutting back to a mile, it'll be interesting to see if they decide to rate with the two speeds drawn to her inside. And I'm not sure she's as effective rating as she is as when she controls the pace. I wonder about that, too. I, I think trips are going to be very important for her. Um, boy, she's another horse who really took advantage last time to win that race. I don't think she was best in there, um, but she did have the best trip. Um, the flip side of that, though, Dan, is that was a mile and eight. And that just might be a little far for her. I, I think cutting back to a mile actually works for her. I just wonder if she's good enough to beat this field. I'm a fan of great sister Diane, but this stakes race came up graded stakes quality. And I'm just not sure great sister Diane is a graded stakes kind of horse. I go back to her Monroe stakes in September. I thought she ran really well that day at a big price. She hasn't been able to replicate that performance against better horses. She's going to get a good pace set up in here. Maybe you could try to sneak her into the bottom of single race exotics at a price, but it just looks like she's found a tough spot. Yeah, I think we look at her the same way. I'm a fan of hers, too. I actually think she's pretty good. I just, I don't like her in this race. I think this race is going to be too tough for her. Interesting runner off the layoff up next, the number seven Valiance for Todd Pletcher. This is a daughter of Tappet who won all three starts last year as a three-year-old, including this effort, the Open Mind Stakes at Monmouth. I thought Nick Juarez gave Valiance a nice trip in this race, settling her in behind the lead, coming to the outside. She's the gray filly. I didn't love the way she finished this race up, but she beat four next out winners, including one that came back to win the Stormy Blue stakes at Laurel with a 90 buyer speed figure. And we know Pletcher is excellent off layoffs. Yeah, yeah you don't have to worry about layoffs at all with this barn. Um, they just always come back running. He has um, great stats, especially with turf routers as well, Dan. So I I'm not worried about the layoff. I do think this spot might be a little tough for her. But I really like um, all three of her races last year as a three-year-old. I think she showed some real talent. And I really like her running style, too. She has speed, but she's very handy. I can see her getting a really good trip here off the layoff. Chad Brown trains the European invader down on the rail. He also handles Tappet Today. And Tappet Today is a very lightly raced mare. And this is another mare that has some upside. Her last race was the Swanee River. We're going to look at that effort right now. She's going to finish third, but... She really did some work the middle portion of this race. She's the gray in between horses ducking down towards the inside. She went after the leaders early. The pace was solid, and she pays the price. The winner of this race, Starship Jubilee, is just really good right now. She came back to win the Great Two Hillsborough with a 94 buyer. She's won five out of her last six Starks. Tappet today, this time around, is going to have others do the dirty work. Yeah, that's what I thought, too. I think the trip could really work out a lot better for her this time. I, You know, we can go back to her as a three-year-old in 2018, Dan. I was a real fan of hers. I thought she really had some potential for Chad Brown. Obviously, her campaign got cut a little bit short, and she missed a lot of time. But I really liked her return from the layoff at Tampa. And as you mentioned last time, I mean, she wasn't going to beat Starship Jubilee. She probably ran the second-best race, though. She did not run poorly at all in that race. Goodbye, Broccoli. A little bit of a reach on paper for this New York bread. She is in good form. She just won an off-the-turf race last time out. She's slowly running herself back into shape in her third start of the form cycle. But this is a mare who, for a very long time, was just stuck in the non-winners of one other than condition in New York. And she's facing a vastly tougher field here. Yeah, I mean, I, I just thought she was hard to like. And here, I, she was a pretty good three-year-old, actually. Um, did not come back good at all last year, I didn't think. And I know she won last time, but that was on dirt. Here's the horse to beat, got stormy. She just had a sensational 2019 campaign. A great multiple grade one winner. Beat the boys in the four-star Dave. Second in the Breeders' Cup mile. Second in the Woodbine mile. Both against males. She tried the boys last time out in the Kilroe off of a disappointing seasonal debut. I thought she ran a lot better in this race. We turned for home in the Kilroe. She had a good trip, prompting a rather moderate pace. She was ridden confidently as always, turning into the lane. She makes the lead. And River Boyne, who's just a, a pretty 
pretty nice horse in Southern California, comes up to her inside and pips her. Got Stormy's tactical speed allows her to really be placed wherever her jockey wants her to be in the early going. I would expect her to be in the second flight behind the speeds. Yeah, probably just take up a tracking spot. I mean, listen, she's just, you know, way the horse to beat in this race. She sort of towers over this field on form. She's probably going to get the right kind of trip in here as well as Saez takes over. I, I don't really know what to say, Dan. They have her 9-5 to five on the line. She's going to be way shorter than that, and she's going to take a ton of beating. And completing the field is WW Fitzy. Nice filly on dirt and synthetic, making her turf debut. She's won seven of 13 starts. I just don't really see the turf pedigree. It's a little too early to uh, discuss the Stallion's prowess on turf. Zero for six with first time turf runners. The dam placed on turf. She was 0 for three. She's sold one prior runner on turf that did not win. But if you go deep in this female family, a lot of dirt influences. Tap to music, Northern of Fleet. Nice horses, not exactly turf horses. And she likes to be forwardly placed. A fast pace might work against her. Yeah, she's hard to knock on paper. She's got a, a really nice record. It feels like she's really improving, too. She ran really well, I thought, winning last time. I just don't like her in this race. The horse to beat is obviously the number 10 uh, in here. Uh, let's take a look at our top selections. We're going to try to beat Got Stormy. Uh, Mike, you're going to try to do it with Tap It today for Chad Brown, a horse that I think this time is going to revert to stalking tactics. And maybe she could run Got Stormy down in the stretch if Got Stormy's close to a pretty fast pace. Yeah, we'll see. She's going to need some breaks, and she's probably going to need um, Got Stormy not to show up with her best race to beat her. Um, I felt like, you know, with Got Stormy just – you know, being a really short price in here, tap it today. You know, maybe you could get a little bit of value out of her. If she's over five to one, I'll take a little shot with her. I picked Tappa today third. I picked Got Stormy second. This race is just a stab for me. Something tells me that Jakarta is going to be sent from post position two, stretching out by Edgar Zayas. And something also tells me that the two other speeds in the race, uh, Valedictory, uh, and Valedictorian and Silver Kitten, are going to let her go. I don't think they're going to show her a lot of respect stretching out. I don't think they think she's going to stay. And maybe she can steal this on the lead for a very dangerous trainer in Michael Maker. But I don't want to have too much money in against got stormy 21087 for me 81071 for mike it's the $75,000 powder break approximate post time for race 9 at Gulfstream 452 eastern good luck